so welcome everyone. It's the final day of the Irish Thematic Seminar Week. Um, hard to believe that the, the last two days have flown in, but I am delighted to introduce you all now to Meg O'Gara of Magnificent uh, Creative. Um, Meg has over 18 years experience and as I know, talking to a lot of you in the bilateral meetings that you have been very much looking forward to Meg's presentation today and it's something that's going to be hopefully very relevant to a lot of you. So without further ado, Meg, I will let you take the floor. Great, thank you, Alison, for um, for that introduction. And I'm just so delighted to be here with you guys today uh, as we talk about trading as a product and how we're going to commercialize your know-how and your experience into a passive income stream or an active income stream. Maybe that could be your main one. Um, so today we're going to I'm going to walk you through the process um, and outline how you approach it. So from the title and all of those kinds of things from right from the, the get go of creating your online course right through to launch. Um, and so thanks again for joining us today. And um, I am Meg O'Gara. My business is called Magnificent Creative. And I am here to help you make more money, save more time and help you serve more people. So what are we going to um, look at today? We are going to let me just share my screen with you. So today we are going to um, run through a bit of an outline of what's involved with creating a course. Um, so when we're talking about uh, on monetizing our knowledge and turning that into an income stream, there's a couple of ways we can do that. One uh, aspect is creating a course, and that is pretty much what we're going to focus on here today. Um, there are other ways of turning your knowledge into um, know-how, so that would be maybe pursuing um, like some affiliate marketing and things like that. But at the moment, this is what we're focusing on. So I have helped clients turn some of their one-to-one -one services into courses on all kinds of topics, from things like jazz piano to home organization, to fitness, public speaking, money management, uh, and even sheepdog training, So and loads more. So really there is, if, if you have something that you have in your mind, there is a, a way that we can monetize that and turn that into a product. Figuring out how you productize your service can sometimes feel really, really overwhelming. Um, I know that, and we get bogged down sometimes in the tech and the platforms, uh, this concept of curriculums, email funnels, sales pages, oh my, course creation does have a lot of moving parts, but by no means are you to feel overwhelmed um, by any of it, we will get through it. So. We're going to look at the basics, creating uh, the perfect topic, learning outcomes, outcomes and course goals, engaging your audience, your target audience and pre-selling, um, building revenue right from the beginning. So right from the, the, the day that you have decided and committed to what your course is going to be, how you look at starting that revenue stream. Um, online course platforms, planning your course content, creating those lesson plans and course content, and finally your launch. So that is a whole lot of us for us to cover today in this workshop so we're gonna um jump right through right in so what is an online course so for anyone who isn't um familiar with online courses online courses are uh, tutoring sessions classes or groups of classes that someone can take remotely from the comfort of their home or anywhere in the world um, and of course these courses can be on any number of topics so we're going to start with a quick poll um, and if you could let us know do you currently have an online course or a passive income stream Great. So um, I can see the uh, the poll results coming in there. So 77% so far. Um, I think there's still a couple of people answering. Oh, it's still going up. So the majority of people don't at the moment have one, but there is some of you that absolutely do. So maybe if you do have one, you're looking at other ways that you can um, add to your course or add value to your um, your students or how you maybe can market that or improve your um, return on, on the investment of your course. So we will cover those things um, absolutely. 
the next question I have for you guys is how long have you been considering turning your knowledge into an income stream? Great. So, well, here we are. So we've got um, some people for more than 18 months, for others, 12 to 18 months. That seems to be the, the two biggest cohorts, um, closely followed by nine to 12. So I get it. Creating a course can feel really, really overwhelming um, because of all the moving parts. There's so much to consider. But the beauty of this online course creation is once you do it and once you get it right, that's it done. You don't have to go back to visit, you know, all of that course creation aspect. You don't have to be repeating yourself. Sure, you probably will update it and keep things fresh, um, but it won't be such a mammoth task. So let's jump on and look at the pros and cons for creating an online course so that you can decide, is this something that you um, want to do and is it a good fit for you? So online courses, they're a fantastic way to serve your audience, but they are not right for everybody. Um, building an online course is something that hap not, doesn't happen overnight, especially if you go to the effort of putting videos in your content. In order to create something of value um, and something that your audience values uh, and something people will pay money for, it's going to take some time and that is going to take effort from you. So that I would consider to be uh, a con. If you're not prepared to put the time in now and invest the, you know, the the, the time in, into crafting something that is going to be real value for your your students, then um, it's not going to be something that's successful. Um, obviously, this isn't a con. This is just uh, a little addendum to that last slide of uh, time. You can uh, definitely save time by looking at pre-selling things and testing things, building, testing and validating. So instead of investing all of your time into creating something and then realizing maybe there was no market for it, testing and validating your idea is a, is a solution uh, to saving that previous con. Um, con number two, people buying it and not finishing it. So this for course creators can sometimes be really, really disheartening when you have put your like literally for some people like sweat and tears into creating your course. And then you log into your dashboard and you see that there's been a big drop off rate in your um, in your course follow through or your course completion. Now, this happens like every course creator, not everyone who takes your course is going to complete it. And that's just a fact of life. Um, but you want to be able to stand over your work. You want people to be able to, you know, for the majority to complete your course and to be giving you really, really good feedback and reviews so that you can sell more courses. Um, keeping it relevant and up to date. So this is done as a con because yes, it is. I know I mentioned earlier that you have um, you've done your course. You do need to jump back in at times to update it, depending particularly on your niche. Some niches will need um, to be updated more often than others. So the ones that would require less maintenance and update upkeep are courses that um, I would call evergreen courses. They are courses that you can um, kind of create and just set to run on autopilot and you don't need to be in there too much um, for other topics um, like for example if you were delivering a course on um, google analytics right google could be releasing um, updates and things to their systems which means that you have to dive back into your course to give your uh, students the most accurate and up-to-date information and you have to do that in a timely manner as these updates are coming out from, from Google in this example. Um, if you didn't do that, your users or your students who buy the course are gonna be really disappointed. They're gonna be leaving you feedback or reviews saying this course is out of date, it's obsolete and looking for refunds. And that is not what you want when you're creating your course. Um, so let's look at the pros. 
the pros of creating your online course is it gives you something to sell. So if you are a business that you are selling your time and you're working with, um, with many clients or just a handful of clients, this gives you something that you can sell to people and you can sell to people that maybe wouldn't be otherwise booking your services. Perhaps they can't afford your services or perhaps they don't have time to, to schedule um, a session with you. They can buy your course and then consume all of the knowledge that you were sharing on their own um, terms. The next thing that is such a brilliant um, pro for creating your course is it helps you build authority. And what I mean by that is you are standing out in your industry as somebody that knows what you're talking about and you are there, um, you're gonna become like the go-to person in that field. This is also why people publish books. Well, not all people, but a lot of people. It really gives you that credibility in your industry. Uh, uh, another pro, it helps you serve more people in a short period of time. So if you are feeling like you're uh, overworked and stretched to capacity, trying to help all of the people that you're working with and to serve them in a really good, high quality manner, that can be really, really difficult to scale because you only have a certain number of hours in a day and a certain amount of time that you can uh, allocate to your clients. So if you create an online course or an online offering, you then have the capability to serve a lot more people with your knowledge and your know-how. Another pro is you can earn affiliate income. So what do I mean by this? Well, if you are somebody that is talking about um, different, say, for example, different tools in your course, you might then have an opportunity to earn affiliate income from that. So an example of that would be, um, say I'm giving you an online course on how to create online courses. And I might say, well, you could use this camera or that camera. There's an opportunity there for me to have an income stream from the cameras I'm recommending through third parties like the, the camera store directly or Amazon. Um, and places like that. So if you are recommending different services or books or even other people's courses, you could you could have affiliate connections with those other people and be earning another income stream from those um, from those connections. And finally, uh, it adds so you can add to your passive income by automating things. So what I mean by this is if you are um, setting up your online course, obviously there's only enough time in a day to do certain things. If you um, automate stuff, you are adding to passive income. So you wanna automate as much things as possible so that you free up all of your time and, uh, and you, can, you can focus on your current work or making your next course. Again, you are going to serve a lot more people. So how does this course creation journey look? Well, nobody, 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 nobody wakes up in the morning and thinks, oh, today is the day. Today is the day I am going to buy an online course. That is just not how it happens. It might be how we would like to think people wake up and want to buy our courses. But in reality, the best online courses that sell, um, they start out more like this. Online courses that sell start with a problem. So the best courses are there to solve a problem for their user. So people wake up in the morning with a problem. They don't wake up with the goal to buy the course. They wake up with the goal to find a solution that's going to fix their problem. And that, my friend, will be your online course. So who, um, there's, and this is an example. So someone here, uh, during the first lockdown across the globe, the, um, the number of people adopting pets and dogs and getting puppies absolutely soared. And suddenly a lot of people found they had a new four-legged friend in their house, right? And they didn't know how to train them. We were all in lockdown. They couldn't get to doggy training lessons or um, anything like that. And so the market for online dog training courses absolutely soar. People were stuck at home with their new pets, wondering how are they gonna teach them to be good on a lead? How are they gonna house train them? How are they gonna stop them chewing all of their stuff in their house? And how are they gonna navigate this new journey? Online courses 
offering this solution to this problem were the perfect fit. And so this is what you need to think of. Who, who are you speaking to? What things can you provide a solution for? Um, so our next question is, just out of interest, are you a service-based business? Yes, so a vast majority of people are service-based businesses, but um, for the people that aren't service-based businesses, don't, don't, don't worry. Something I hear all the time is only certain, certain types of businesses can offer online courses. And I get asked, is this true or false? Um, well, I am here to tell you firsthand that this is a resoundingly false claim. If you are able to teach your skill set or your methods to another human being, you can turn those skills or methods into an online course. Online courses are for anybody and everybody. Um, if you are a coach, a service-based business, a problem solver, anyone who has knowledge, you can create a course. And what I want you to do is to ask yourself, am I passionate about a particular topic? Am I highly knowledgeable on a skill or a particular topic? And do I want to help other people learn about that skill? But most importantly, the question I want you to ask yourself is, would I still teach that topic even if I wasn't getting paid for it? And if you answered yes to all four of those questions, then creating an online course is right for you. Do you currently have an idea for your online course? This is going to be a poll question if we could bring up the polls for that. Great. So a lot of people have an idea, which is brilliant because that is, you know, sometimes the part that people struggle with trying to narrow down all of these ideas. Um, and if you don't have an idea yet, hang tight, we will get to it. Um, so creating a successful online course means we have to come up with a topic. We have to create engaging learning outcomes and quantifiable goals for ourselves and for our learners. Without these things, your course will lack direction, it will make it less successful and less engaging for both you to create and for your students to follow. So you must be really passionate about the topic that you're teaching on. If you're not passionate, it's gonna come across in your course, right? It's gonna be so, so obvious to your learners. It's gonna be really dull and flat, which will impact on the completion rates, which will impact on the feedback and reviews that you get, that validation that you get. Um, and it, it just won't be as successful as something that you are passionate about. So please, please don't ever start thinking of what course will you create based on the focus of the income. Nobody needs to start their course creation journey thinking, I want to create this passive income stream because I want to give up my day job, because I want to be on a beach in Mexico and I don't want to do what I'm doing anymore. If that is your goal for creating your course, it is not going to work. You need to come from a place of service. Your goal should be providing the best content that you can to your audience, to serving people, to giving your knowledge and helping others learn from your blueprint, from your methods and from your know-how. If you do this, you are going to be creating the best course possible and the best course for your learners who are going to be you know sharing that knowledge then talking about the course this great course that they've got and the value that they've got from it which is going to then bring back more sales to you more revenue and grow your course so the goal should always be start from a place of service look at where your passions lie ask yourself things like what do i love doing what do I love sharing with other people? Um, what do I look forward to doing in my life? Um, what do I wish other people cared about more that I can teach them if, you know, if they um, need to know more about that? 
with those questions alone, you should be able to create a list of potential course topics just based on those passions. It's all about finding a knowledge balance though. We need to be more than just passionate about our topic. We need to know a bit more about it than just have this blinding love. Um, but with that said, and this is something that I have seen held so many people back, we get struck by this almost imposter syndrome or this delay of, well, I will do that course when I've completed X, Y, or Z, right? I will do that course when I finish this other course that's going to teach me some more extra knowledge or I need to know that bit before I can do that. That is absolutely a mindset that will not serve you. It will only hold you back. You absolutely need to be knowledgeable about your topic, but you do not need to be the absolute expert and guru. Once you know more than the people you're trying to help, you already know enough. You're a step ahead in that journey. And this is the journey that you have experience on, you have knowledge on, and you can share with others in a really valuable way. So that leads us on to demand. The topic that we've picked needs to have market demand, right? You don't want to select a topic that only you care about. If you do that, your course will be really not successful only because there won't be many students interested in learning about the topic. So how you can test if there's demand for your topics is you can start to look around and see if there's other courses, excuse me, on the same topic. You can research future demands and you can also look at pre-selling your idea. So how do we start with this? Well, this is the question that I, or the statement that I get put, gets put to me regularly. What if other people are selling the same or similar courses as me? And this puts a lot of people off, but in truth, this should be making you do a happy dance. If you see other courses in your industry, in your niche or on your topic, that already tells you that there's demand. There's people seeking out courses in this. And there, that doesn't mean that there's no room for you and your course and your expertise. If you have something to share and you're bringing yourself, your true authentic self to your course, your course is already going to be different, right, to the ones that are already out there. You and your uniqueness will have a different teaching approach. You will have had a different experience of the learning tools that you are going to be sharing. And so this, this knowledge is valuable in its, in its own right. So please don't be put off if you see other things in your industry. That is a good thing. Great places to start with finding out if your, if your course has demand is to look, start looking around the internet. I like to help people work um, and start by looking at Google Trends. So this is a brilliant free tool. If you, go to, if you just type in Google Trends in, um, in, in Google, you will bring you to this page and you can start to research what your specific topic is by typing it into the box here. You can do split tests, you can have a look at different keywords that are relevant to your industry. And these are what I call signals. So all of this research that you're going to be doing now is you're looking for signals. So start with Google Trends and have a look, dive in and see what um, what kinds of signals you're getting? Is there is there good feedback? Is there um, a growth in your industry in that particular niche? And it will give you a breakdown in terms of percentage. And for some people, the percentage of growth is like thousands and thousands and thousands of percent over the last 12 months um, because more people are looking for different solutions to the different problems that we're facing, particularly while we're all in lockdown. But that's not to say that online courses is a new thing or that it's only got this short lifespan. Online courses have been around for years and years and years. And they have, um, the journey that they themselves have been on in, in terms of how they've developed and changed over time um, is really interesting. So you will see that the demand for what you are looking at in your particular niche will also have changed over time. And with Google Trends, you can look um, at very specific time frames, so you could say, is there more demand in the last three months or versus the exact same three months of the year in previous years, so you can break it down to really, really get a really good insight on on your topic. 
The next uh, tool that I recommend you look at is another course platform called Udemy. So this is an online course uh, marketplace, which we'll be talking about more um, in a later slide. But just to say, if you pop over to Udemy and type in the keywords surrounding your course, you will have a really good um, insight into what other course creators are doing in that industry. This is by no means uh, me encouraging you to copy somebody else's course. What I would say is this is you doing your market research. You need to do um, some thorough research to see what other people are doing in your industry so that you can do it differently, so that you can identify gaps in the market. You can see where there's knowledge missing and you can bridge that gap, thus making your course more relevant uh, and better suited to the needs of your audience. So more signals can be got from places like Amazon. And I truly, truly love to look at things like the best sellers list. Now, when I logged in, <laughs> I must be on my Amazon shopping uh, <laughs> history. All I could see at the moment, well, on the on the homepage was children's books. So if you go to the Amazon best sellers and you type in, in the best seller section, keywords surrounding your niche, and you look at the books that are coming up, in your niche, if you click on those books and start looking for signals within those books. So much like Udemy, you're looking at, look at the contents page, see what kinds of content is in these books that are related to the topic that you wanna do your course on. I like to take this further. I love to jump into the reviews. I disregard the top tier of reviews and the bottom tier of reviews because they are the happiest customers and the, the most unsatisfied customers. And that's not going to give me information and clear signals that I need. Look for signals in the middle. Look for things where people have given feedback and said, I really like this, but it would have been helpful if there was X, Y, or Z. Or I really like the way they did that, but if they had this, that would have made this more valuable. The beauty in doing this is you can start to gather all of this information and it paints a picture for you. It essentially gives you the roadmap of what you need to cover in order to meet those needs of the audience that you specifically want to speak to. So the next step, once you've got your topic and you've researched it, is to start creating engaging learning outcomes. And if you aren't sure what a learning outcome is, um, learning outcomes are direct sentences that tell your potential customers exactly what they're going to learn from your course. If you do not have good learning outcomes, fewer people will purchase your, your, your product. So you want to be really clear about the outcomes that people are going to get if they take your course. So remember that people aren't interested in, in the, in the, in the actual course itself. They are interested in the solution that you're providing. So I want you to think about it like a transformation. People are only interested in the transformation um, and what they're going to get. So in order for your customers to purchase your course, they must believe that your course offers them something specific, something unique that they can use in their lives. More specifically, your customers need to have a really clear idea of what they're going to get from your course and why they should take your course over another course. So these sentences in your outcomes need to be very, very concise. And the best way to convince your customer to take your course is to create these learning outcomes. When drafting them, you need to think about the most important things that your students are going to take away from your course. You don't want any of these filler topics in those outcomes. Instead, you want to make sure that your outcomes comes are tailored to your course's main topics and parallel what you've put as your title. So remember when you're crafting your title um, of your course, that's going to be a hook, right? That's a hook for your audience. And also people often don't realize your title is, is SEO. Your title needs to be optimized for your search engine optimization. So there's no point picking a really kind of fluffy, crazy title like, you know, Sarah's wishy-washy guide to something, something. Um, you need to have a very clear, direct title so that when people are typing something, their problem, for example, into Google, 
what's coming up you're going to start ranking your courses will be indexed in search engines and suddenly people are putting a problem into google and hey your uh, course pops up because the title is very clear when they click on it they get very very clear learning outcomes which is the solutions it's going to be the transformation they'll get from taking your course so focus on the outcomes rather than the features when doing your learning outcomes um, and outcomes that are crafted this way where you're you're focusing on the outcomes uh, on the the outcomes rather than saying well you're going to get this in the course and you're going to get that and you'll get you'll get x number of video files and you'll get three audio files that will not sell your course and this is something that i get asked quite often like how how many videos should be in my course how long should my course be there is no no secret sauce for that there is no right or wrong answer you could have the most amazing five minute course that gives your your learner or your student the biggest transformation and for that you might charge a whole heap similarly you might have a course that is your signature course and it you know goes for maybe four five six modules and you might charge an equal amount it's all about the value that you're giving to your customer or your learner or your student and again the circles is right back to you need to come from a space of providing service providing really good quality service and content um, and if you're passionate about your topic and you're coming at your topic from a place of service and wanting to help your students then all of this will fall into place so what types of courses are out there? What types of courses could you create or should you create? Well, I like to think of it as there's three main types of courses. We've got the Kickstarter course. We've got what I call the feature course and we've got a flagship or authority course. A Kickstarter course is your jumping off point. This is where your students get started in your area of expertise. Your training will give them just enough information and support to help them get started with moving forward. If you think of it as a way of like kickstarting momentum in their journey, this is what I would call a Kickstarter course. The next course um, sorry, just to mention as well about the Kickstarter one is in a Kickstarter course, you're, you're giving your students um, a way to produce really small but very valuable results that could lead to bigger results if they're going to keep going with it. And that's that one in a nutshell. The next one is a feature course. So a feature course would take a deeper dive into just one very specific area. That course looks at something very specific and detailed and gives them information on that. Um, it's often set like a step-by-step -step framework, um, a feature course for your students, you'll help them get very, very specific results in one area. So an example of this would be um, a lady I worked with, she's an interior designer, and she was giving her um, design plans out to people her um her clients but she was also blogging about it and sharing some of her concepts and things on her blog and suddenly people were saying hey i really i really love your um your designs how did you do that and she quickly realized that there was this whole market for um other people within her business to teach them how to use a very specific software that she used to create these designs so she created an online course teaching other uh, interior designers how to use this particular software um, so that they could also deliver their design work and their concept work to clients this online course took off and sold and sold and sold to other people in her industry that was a feature course she was teaching them one very specific piece of software a very specific framework that they could follow to replicate how she does it and they could then do this in their own business a flagship or authority course is a very comprehensive system. This is at what would be the most in-depth of the three types of courses. It's very specific, it's very detailed, and it includes the whole framework from start to finish that will lead your student to a transformation. So if you picture this as something like you are creating a blueprint, you are, if, if you are giving someone um, a flagship course on, um overcoming something you are giving them the whole blueprint the whole map that they need to to take to do that journey from start to finish 
this is what a flagship authority course is. So let's jump in with a quick other poll. Um, what's your biggest obstacle to selling, to launching, selling and selling your knowledge based business? And while you're doing that, I will just keep talking. So time and time again, I find that um, the very first stumbling block people hit on their way is, uh, oh, and exactly this is what's coming up here in the poll. This is it, is the tech. The tech is what seems to really like baffle people. Um, you know, that we we can pick the topic and we can do things, but when it gets, gets to tech, it sometimes feels like it zaps our brain power. But your brain power has value and that value is needed. So please, please don't let the fear of technology or a trip down a Google rabbit hole stop you from building your course and putting your ideas out into the world. Um, how did that one get in there? We will jump into the into some of that techie stuff in a later in an upcoming slide so that's um that's great so i know now where <laughs> we are all on the same page so when you are uh starting your online courses the uh one obstacle is trying to find the right audience and your target so how do you do this well you need to have a really clear idea of who your course is for if your course um is disorganized or you know you're speaking to the wrong audience it's going to be really hard to market it to potential customers so the it's super important that you find the who your intended audience is right from the beginning so right before you do anything on your course creation please 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 remember this if you are creating a course for everyone then you are creating a course for no one it helps you and it helps your students to be very, very specific about who your course is for. A helpful assignment, if you wanted to do an assignment for it, is to create a customer avatar. In other words, you want to create a profile, right, of your ideal customer. You want to get super clear on the demographics, the geographics and the psychographics of your target audience. So, for example, ask yourself, what's their occupation? Where are they located? What's their age? What's their gender? Um, what's their average salary? Things like what's their education level, their marital status? Do they read? Uh, what, and if they do, what blogs do they read? Uh, what do they uh, look up to? What are their goals or their aspirations? What are their current problems and what are their current challenges? Also ask yourself, well, what courses have they bought before or tried before? And were there pros and cons to those courses? Because if you're trying to target this audience, chances are other people are too. So have a look, do some research, see what other things that they may potentially have taken. Better again, if you know somebody that is pretty much your ideal target client or target student, ask them, speak to them and see, will they share this knowledge with you? The best way to do this exercise is to really, really crystallize it and picture one person. Picture, you know, paint it out in your mind of who this person is. And once you know your intended audience, you should then start engaging with them through your social media and other channels like your email marketing. So that step will not only help you build your presence and your credibility online, it will also serve to start building a buzz around your upcoming course. You can engage your audience by posting about it on social media, like multiple social media accounts um, and sending out emails to your followers or to the people that are engaging with you and maybe who have opted in now to your email list. So you want to start spending your time on social media platforms where your audience is hanging out the most. And depending on what your course is and who your audience is, that will vary. So perhaps your um, target audience is on Instagram or Facebook or Facebook groups. I cannot stress enough. Do not underestimate the value that you will get by joining Facebook groups where your target audience is. You might also find your target audience hanging out in LinkedIn groups, on Quora, on Reddit or Twitter. Have a look around, do some research and wherever you find the majority of your, st your students or your, your you know, uh, target audience and, and dream students, 
show up there, show up there and start being the authority figure, the person that they're going to go to to ask questions to. And so you have a nice, healthy bank of people that will be have an appetite and be ready to buy your course as soon as it's either launched or in pre-sale. If you are looking to join um, forums to, to talk about your, your topic or to share knowledge or to see what other people are asking so you can start curating your content for your own course. Uh, a really useful tool is to use Google. If you pop over to Google search and you type in topic plus forum, so the topic is whatever your niche is or your industry plus forums, this will bring you to a whole bunch of forums on that area. So there's huge benefit in finding the groups slash forums on Facebook or LinkedIn but also you could find other um, really valuable groups and content by doing this. So let's have a look at um, the different online platforms for delivering your course. And this can be an obstacle as well as, as it requires some tech setup. So some people really struggle with this. Um, there is two main options for course platforms. Option one, self-hosted. Option two, hosted. So one of the most important decisions that you're going to make about your online course is how to upload it to the internet, how to get it out there. Are you going to upload it to a platform? Uh, or are you going to have two different platforms working in tandem? And how is this all going to, going to work? Self hosted online courses are courses that you yourself are hosting on your own website. There is benefits and serious negatives to doing this. So some of the benefits of hosting your own online course on your website is you have complete ownership over it because you own the site, right? So you you get to decide how much you're going to charge for the course. Uh, you aren't competing with other brands in your industry. You're getting everybody on your website to, to buy from you there. Many new course creators find that doing this can be really, really challenging because maybe you don't have the experience of setting up your website or creating online course platforms within a website, there can be some serious tech obstacles when doing this. This is why new course creators often opt for the hosted option. The other downside to having the self-hosted option is if you are creating multiple courses or video heavy courses or content heavy courses, it can in fact slow down your website. And slow websites are not something that's going to be your friend. Google will um, gives you, Google gives your website like what's called a credibility score. And part of the, the algorithm for, for figuring all that out is to, um, to see how fast your website loads. And if you have a really uh, heavy load on your system, that's going to slow it down, which is going to push you further down the Google rankings, which is going to make it then harder for your course and your website to show up when people are searching Google, which then makes it harder for you to sell this thing that you've created that you've put all of your time into. So um, that's not to say it's totally off the table. Some people really want to go down that route. And if you do, you can use uh, WordPress, which is the most popular um, website content management system it, because it's free. 30% um, I think when I last checked of websites, at least on the internet use it. So you're in good company with companies like Disney and Home Depot that use that um, website platform. You then pick, uh, a plugin that you particularly like, like something like Member Mouse, BodyPress, or LearnPass, to create your um, online school or academy for yourself hosted. For hosted, this is the all in one platform um, option or solution. And there are several things to choose from. So if you're new to online courses, this might be what you'd prefer this third party platform. Um, and they're often called LMS systems, which stands for learning management. Uh, systems or solutions. People like these because they provide everything you need uh, for your online course. So they include things like the formats, the fonts, the sale pages and more. The downside is that you have a higher monthly um, or yearly subscription. So with the self-hosted version, you don't have any extra fees, but, um, but with the hosted versions, you have a monthly or yearly subscription to cover your site. You're also sometimes limited in how many students you're allowed to enroll. You're sometimes limited into um, 
how how you can interact with your students and things like that but many creators are willing to sacrifice that money and that over that outcome that spend um, and ownership and freedom in order to have some flexibility and accessibility in a one platform so if you're looking at hosted the things that you're likely to be looking at are platforms like teachable thinkific or kajabi um, teachable and thinkific are probably the two most popular platforms they they seem to kind of be pretty much on par with each other sometimes one will take a little jump ahead by adding in a new feature but it's never long before the other one kind of jumps back in with a, a counter feature kajabi is a little bit more expensive um i think it's about 199 dollars a month um and so for people who are looking for something that maybe is a hosted solution but isn't quite at the same price point. Podia and Guru Can are two other options that a lot of people like. Um, there's also Mighty Networks, which is another um, network and, and platform for creating your courses that people like for hosted platforms. There is a third option, and this is Udemy. So Udemy, for anyone who hasn't ever heard of it, is a online platform for like a marketplace, a bit like going to Amazon to shop for your um, your your things that you want. People go to Udemy to shop for, for courses. The downside of Udemy is you have zero control about how much you set your course. So say you decide your course is one hundred and ninety seven dollars. Quite often Udemy. Um, if you've opted into doing the market, allowing Udemy to do the marketing, they can heavily discount that by as much as 90 percent whenever they want. Um, and you have literally zero say in that. You also are competing with other people in the um, in the space and oftentimes people in the same industry as you to get your course seen. If you decide not to allow Udemy to promote your course and you don't want them to discount your course, that means then that you are solely responsible for promoting your own course and sharing it and getting it out there. Udemy are really prohibitive in how you can liaise and contact the people on your list, the people that have already taken your course or share other courses that you want with those people. So that's not to say that Udemy is a total, um, a total loss. There is benefits of being in Udemy. A lot of people would have a free, very small taster or like even smaller than your kickstart course, like a little lead magnet course on Udemy that would hopefully then lead people or pique their curiosity that they would then go and search you elsewhere. Udemy do not allow you to mention your other courses. Um, you can't jump on there on a free course and say, hey, come over to my own platform where you can get my, how you know, my spotlight course or my, my feature course or my, you know, my um, authority flagship course. They do not want you to be jumping people off their platform. So they are very, very prescriptive and prohibitive about what you can and can't do in their space. Um, <clears throat> this is just an example of what happens with Udemy. So um, like this is a course that's just been like discounted 1099, 1099, but likely these courses were, um, were <laughs> significantly more when they were listed. When you were creating your course, it's Udemy is a really handy place to go. You can look at these ratings here, these star ratings here to see what people are, what people are, you know, um, saying about the course and any any gaps that, that they're saying are in the course so that you can improve your own course. Um, planning your course content is the next uh, thing that we must look at. So you need to decide, is your course going to have um, what like video? Is it going to be audio? Is it going to be downloadable files or workbooks? Is Are you going to have quizzes or exams? And if you are going to have um, visuals or graphs, when you plan it all out, I find it really useful to keep it all of your information in a really handy spreadsheet so that you can look at a glance and keep track of what's what. Um, also, at this stage, it's really handy to see what can you um, what way can you deliver your content to your learners? So get creative, think about this target audience that you spent so long thinking about. How do they consume content? Are they someone that's really busy? Are they somebody that's going to be likely to sit in front of the computer to go through your stuff? Or does it need to happen that way? Could you possibly give them the content as audio files that they could then listen to as they're going for a run or as they're driving their car? That way then they are still going through your course, but they can do other things. So if it's not something that they have to attend to in, you know, complete entirety, is there ways that they can consume the information and get that transformative process that you were you were selling them um, in a way that suits them and on their terms? Um, this is a quick uh, demo of when you're setting up your content, your 
for your content creation if you're doing videos have a really uh, good look at your space lighting is key especially if you're going to be doing a flagship or authority course so if you're going to be charging the big bucks for your course you need to deliver something that is worthy of um worthy of those um worthy of the, the cost so make sure that you get your lighting right get your camera set up right and have good audio audio is key here because nobody is likely to finish your course if the audio and sound really is terrible um if you notice here they've got this like um honeycomb thing on the wall that is a like a sound um buffer it's like a spongy thing i can't actually think of the exact name of it but a sound curtain um so even just to test bits check what your audio sounds like if you're recording yourself um if you can um hire somebody professional maybe to come and help you if you're doing a, a flagship authority course um because diy videos sometimes aren't um, what your clients are or your students are expecting from that. So tech tools, what kinds of things can you um, can you use to create your online course? Well, depending on what your course um, is and what way you want to deliver your course, there's so many tools out there. So if you're doing a course where you want to just uh, say you're sharing your screen, uh, Loom is a really great, very low cost tool. To do that camtasia is another tool where you can record your screen or you can record yourself and edit all of your video footage yourself in camtasia um, that is one of the premier tools that course creators use when putting together their video footage you can um you can have like terrific things with camtasia where you can have like people cl click buttons and have hot spots that will take them to other information so that is a tool I definitely, definitely recommend. I also recommend having a really good camera, whether that be a really decent web camera, like a Logitech Streamcam or a Biro, um, or leveraging your actual digital camera to use to take your um, to take your video footage if you're doing video footage. Um, microphones, microphones are so important um, for your sound and to get things sounding right and yeah so sound visual and um screen recording screen recording so loom is is one tool screencast omatic is another tool that are quite low cost or of course you can use zoom so all of this you know can sometimes be a barrier for some people for their course creation i have had people come to me that say you know well i don't know what tools to use or i don't have the budget for for tools i don't have a, a camera for example or i don't have a webcam use what you have you can create a really really valuable good great online course with what you have and we all have a mobile phone or a cell phone you can use that to create exactly what your student needs to share your knowledge to share the value um, it doesn't have to be you know some professional high-end production if if that's not within your reach right now you can do a lower end course and start with what you know and use the tools that you you have um so your lesson plans and course content um so i'm looking at the time here i better start speaking faster because we <laughs> we still have so much to get through so lesson plans and course content um when you're planning your online course it's really really important to go through what you what you want to take people the journey you want to take people on this is a transformative journey you need to really plan it out for yourself the point of having a lesson plan is to give you a definitive script to go off when you create this content um, if your lesson plans are unclear or lack the information they need your course will seem disoriented it will be unprofessional so it's really important to create the best lesson plan that you can Personally, I love post-it notes. I have like a stack of these things and I plan out like all of my content. So not just for course creation. If, well, and if I'm working with course creators, we sit and do this together or on Zoom. Um, but I do, I use course post-it notes for literally everything from like planning blog posts to family trips. Post-it notes are your friend because you can color code things. You can put down your um, different topics for your lessons and you can move things around and you can then see, well, there's a gap here or actually that would work better as a video or I need to do something more about that. Um, also, just to say, when you're doing your course like lesson plan and you're planning out your, say you're doing video for your course, your videos need to be really brief. Nobody wants to sit and watch a super long video. 
the, the way courses are consumed are short bite-sized pieces. People want this transformative journey, but they want it fast. And this is where uh, online courses has changed from, from when they first kind of came out. People were using the, the selling point of, well, come get my course. It's got like 50 hours of video. And people were thinking, oh, great, 50 hours. Now people do not have the time to sit for 50 hours to watch your course. They want the transformation. They want your knowledge, but they want it as quickly as possible. So cut out all of the fluff when you are doing your lesson plan. Get to the fundamentals. Get to the essential information that they need to take them from A to B and use your post-it notes to do that um, and plan it all out. So when I say plan it all out, plan it right down to what's the multimedia what's the exact like that you're going to use is it going to be a video is it going to be a audio file is it going to be a workbook is it going to be a checklist use the exact phrasing as well that you're going to be using uh, in your videos um, and that's how you create a killer lesson plan so decide on your media that's your step one decide on your media create your lesson plan um, for each lesson and know what exactly how, what way you're going to deliver this lesson Step two, get yourself a general outline for every single lesson that you're doing. So what I mean by that is your lesson, you should have, you should know what your introduction is going to be, what the key point is, what the lesson overview is, and what your section. So, so section one, your main point, is it going to have a visual or a worksheet? Section two, your second main point, and so on and so forth, until you get to your conclusion, where you're going to restate the point of the lesson and give a general overview of the main topics discussed, and by the end, of it you um you might even pose a question or give them a glimpse of something else next you're going to script out your lessons this is optional but i highly 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 recommend scripting out your lessons so once you have your general outline for your course script out what you want to teach each individual in each individual lesson and that means you should write down exactly what you want to say um and or or, or what you want to put in the workbook um, don't leave open space for you to ad lib or improvise be as specific as possible and if you're going to use a video or audio file plan out exactly what you're going to say in that use your greetings uh your examples that you're going to share your sign offs that you're going to use this will stop you from using filler words or sounding awkward when you speak for documents type out exactly what document um, entails and that will allow you to either edit the document over multiple rounds. And so this will then make sure that your content is accurate and contains absolutely no typos. So you're looking after everything uh, over the, the whole journey of your course creation. Last, uh, is this lastly? Yes, make sure to uh, record or make your content. So after your script is planned out, it's time to actually make the content and this this can seem overwhelming but break it down so if you look at how many videos you need and decide well i'm going to do one or two videos a day or i'm going to blast out five videos in a week get your course content done so if that's your powerpoints or you're recording your videos or yourself or typing up files set small measurable goals for what you're going to do each day if you're going to spend 20 minutes a day working on your course just get the thing done and this is a little um, Excel sheet that I love, love, love to use when I'm tracking my online course. So pop in your name, your subtitle, and never underestimate the power of your subtitle or your tagline here, because again, this is something that is going to sell your course. I map out what the lessons are, what if, if it's going to be video only or audio file, any lesson or recording notes, links to the documents. Um, and you can add in your own your own headings or or things like that. So we've got lesson link and link to where I have the document saved on the cloud. The progress of I need to script it. I need to do you know um, <laughs> finish working on the content. Is it a video file? What's that? A link to the video. So if I have the video hosted, unlisted, private over on YouTube, for example, I'll put the link there. So I have it all in an easy space. And then the lesson complete. If you want a copy of this template feel free to email me and I will share this template with you so that you have your own template for creating your online courses and keeping your um, keeping your, your lesson structure all, all nice and organized. Next, we're on to the launch. So once your content is all made, it's time to start launching your, your digital product. Launching your online course includes marketing your, your course and having a soft launch often is very helpful and helps you with doing any final cleanups. Depending on how you have been marketing your course during that initial setup stage, launching your online course can take anything from a few days to several weeks to complete. 
Oh, so let's have a look at what steps we need to complete to complete our course and launch it. Um, the first thing you need to do is to really amp up your marketing techniques. So you should be doing more of what you have been doing. So by now, I would hope that you have been showing up in these forums, showing up in Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups or wherever your audience is consistently. Consistency is key. So you should now start showing up more. Up to this point, you've been talking about this course you're working on. You've been sharing your knowledge and value. Um, and now it's time to, to sell. At the same time, you should also be amping up your marketing tactics in other areas to reach more people than before. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, first, let's look at a soft launch. Um, a soft launch is always something I would recommend. It allows you to allow a very select group of people at the start of your course or get in early. And the benefit of that is they can help you ensure things run smoothly and that there's no technical issues. Um, a soft launch is a great way to get more customers and ensure that your product is of higher caliber. It also helps you get reviews, feedback, testimony, so that when you launch in earnest, you've already got this bank of um, reviews and feedback and testimonies that's really going to bolster your credibility in this niche. So in exchange for the cooperation of the people that are taking your course in the soft launch, they often get a discount for the course, right? So you should offer them a discount and they will hopefully collaborate with you, give you their um, honest feedback and any share any technical issues or anything about that, that you can then address to make your course even better. Um, email marketing. So one of the most successful marketing tactics for your selling your online course is email marketing. This is where you are just going to be so happy. Um, of course, there are other avenues, but you should be focused on creating a very extensive list right from day one. And when I say right from day one, I mean, you've decided your topic, you've decided you're creating a course, you're committing to starting your course, this is day one. You should now be focused on getting your email list. So start gathering your people's emails, start gathering emails of people who are interested in, in what you're doing um, and from that pre-selling phase. And you can then continue to market your course to them uh, after your soft launch and when you're launched. Moving forward, you're going to need to get yourself an email marketing system such as Active Campaign Convert Kit. Uh, there's loads of them, mailer light, de depending on your needs. So I personally love Active Campaign. So in order to build and send out your emails to your subscribers, you're going to sign up to one of these or an alternative. Um, to create an email marketing strategy, you need to begin by creating your email account for your cor course. Do not use your personal email account. So I will say that again, don't use your personal email account when you're signing up to create your marketing content. Um, additionally, any lead magnets that you're using for your to email out to your um, potential students needs to be set up within your autoresponder here. Um, things like a free cheat sheet or a web book is a great, great, great tool as a lead magnet. So you've got the knowledge, you've gone and you've created the course, you can then create um, or, or pull from, extract from your course, something that is free value. So by free value, it's something that's not gonna cost you anything. You've already done it, you've already created it, but you're giving something that's valuable or perceived value to your students or potential students so that they'll jump into your system and, and hopefully get on, your, get on board with your course. Once you've crafted the perfect email sequence and lead magnet, you are free then to send this out to your list. Other places that you can be marketing your course is your social media. So you've been showing up uh, consistently, hopefully by now on your social media, and you should use as many media sites and blogs as possible to reach a really wide variety of audiences, keeping your brand consistent and using professional, um, educated and engaging a voice. And always remember to use active verbs when talking about your course. Um, you can use different tools to create, you know, social media graphics and banners and flyers to really drive some interest and create uh, interest around your course. You can also connect with influencers or other people in your industry that could um, share your course or speak about it like an affiliate program um, and recommend, uh, recommend you to their followers. Pay-per-click ads. So if you have an ad budget and I'm telling you, you really, really should have an ad budget for your course, um, consider promoting your course online through either Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google ads, um, Bing ads, YouTube ads, um, and 
anywhere else that you you um you like to show up uh, that's by no means to say you need to have them on ads on all platforms i would say pick either google ads or facebook ads or wherever your audience is and show up there the best part about these advertising um, platforms is that often they're pay per click so you are only paying for the clicks of people who are the most qualified leads that are interested in going to you for your for your um for your course so i have the next one is how realistic is it to make a full-time income on one single online course and we're going to just have a quick look at one course that uh somebody that we've worked with and what their on what their outcomes were so keywords for this bit are our net profit so for anyone who is not sure that's your profit after your expenses and your gross profit so the profit you get before expenses and this is where it gets a little bit um a bit technical so your course if you want to have a course earning ten thousand euros per month in sales and this is it you pick what your magic number is so you pick what number you want to gain in your sales and you reverse engineer everything that you want from that so for this particular course the goal was we wanted to get ten thousand a month in sales and this is how we did it the basics were the course was 149 euros and truthfully that actually was considered a low end course. Um, this was a, a lady who was in the legal field and she was um, after creating a course for other professionals in her industry and she priced her course at 149. Could she have priced it more and got that? I would say absolutely, but this was the price that she went with. Running Google Ads then, um, we set up Google Ads. We did not run Facebook ads um, for two reasons. So the audience just wasn't on Facebook, but also Google ads meant that we were only paying for the leads that were qualified enough to click on her ad. So remember, your course is to provide a solution to a problem. So you're going to pose your Facebook, your Google ads um, with that solution. So when somebody types their problem into Google, your solution is what comes up and how this works is we did it with a blog post so on her website we um, had a blog post talking about the solution to this particular problem and on that blog post on that blog post it brought you through to a free mini course so landing page that answers a question on her that her ideal student is looking for um, funnels through then to a free mini course in the mini course, we included an opt in within this article in the blog. Um, I seem to have a typo there. So then there's an opportunity to sign up for a full course at the end. And then we set up an email uh, automation sequence. So this was all done then on autopilot. When somebody landed on the page on the blog post, nobody had to do anything. All of this was set up automatically running um, really efficiently. So here was the income goal. Income goal was one online course to get 10,000 a month. The course is priced for 149 euros um, per sale, which meant we need 67 sales a month. So that's 16 sales a week and two sales per day. The sales conversion rate for this particular course and your course will be different um, depending on what your course is in and your keywords and things like that was 5% for this. So the leads that we needed was uh, 1,340. For this particular course and for the keywords that we were bidding on in, in Google Ads, it meant that the cost per lead was one euro and 25 cent. So the uh, Google ad spend meant came out at 1675 euros per month. Now, if that takes your breath away, don't panic. Google ad spend does not on your course does not start at this level. Um, and also Google have um, free ads that you can claim if you Google uh if you google google free ads um credit you they they often have 150 euros i believe of free ad credit that you can claim so you could use that to start your marketing budget for your online course and when you test and when you test and test and test then you start to scale up and this is this was the formula so to get 10,000 um per month in sales 1675 was what had to be spent so here we go, the ads management. So daily revenue came out at 375, the daily ad spend 55 euros and the daily net profit um, of that spend was 320. 
So let's look at the balance sheet. So the course total for the month was 10,000. Google Ads spent 16.75. The platform that she uses to deliver her course. So if you remember, we talked about the tech there, that's either your Thinkific, your um, Teachable, your Podia, whatever your platform is, the, the cost for this particular one was 99 euros per month. The email automation um, program was 29 euros a month and the sales funnel tool came out at 37 a month. So when you're thinking of your technology and your tech stack, I know it can be really um, daunting and you think, oh my goodness, like uh, these are all extra outlays and oh, do I really need that? But when you get things uh, set up correctly, this is, this is the outcome that you could be looking at. So this stack ended up with a net profit of 8,150 euros every single month. Now, some months was a little bit more, some months were a little bit less, but on average, that is, is pretty sweet, huh? So um, total core sales, 10,000 a month, expenses 1,850 a month, net profit uh, 18, uh, sorry, 8,150, which meant an annual net profit of 97,800 a year. Now that's obviously before taxes and things like that. So just that's, that's the, the net. So this is it, your sales funnel. Keep it simple, test it. Uh, this is how you, how you would do this is set up a sales funnel, test, test, test. See, is it working? Uh, track your numbers. So when I say track your numbers, I mean your cost per click, your number of leads, the cost of your leads and your sales conversion rates and set your income goals. Uh, and once you do that, that that will give you the outcome that you want. So you want to set what your income goal is and then you kind of reverse engineer all of the other stuff. Uh, this is an example of what a simple online course sales funnel looks like. You've got your Google ads, you've got your blog posts leading to a mini course. Uh, you've got your automated email sequence then being triggered. They get uh, option for sales to, to purchase your paid course um, directly from the email sequence or from the mini course. And that, um, that is it. So let me go back to... My... That's so fantastic, Meg. Thank, thank you so much. Um, so informative. Answers a lot of questions, but also I think produces a lot of questions. Oh, I'm sure. I was, I was trying to leave time for questions. I think we have about 15 minutes. So if anyone has questions that people want to um, throw at me, feel free and I will do my best to answer them in the time that we have left. Yeah, we, we have. Uh, a, a slew of questions that were poured in as you were speaking. So I, I will read them out to you. Um, I think some have been, you know, partially or maybe even fully answered while you were talking, but maybe we just go through them anyway. So how do we ensure that people finish the course? How do we incentivize them? So there's, that's a really great question. So when I am um, mapping out courses with people, I always say, keep it, Keep it really brief. So people want a really quick solution. Break down your course into bite-sized pieces. Keep your, like if you're doing video content, ideally your target for creating each individual video um, is very short. Your video should be like two, three minutes long, at most nine minutes is the max per video. So when you're doing your lesson plan, break that down even further. So it's not like one lesson and you're sitting down to talk for half an hour about something that truthfully will, no, will not serve you. If you break your topics down into very small bite-sized pieces, this is this really, I, I cannot stress this enough, this really improves your chances of your learner or your student completing your course. Because like we all have like, loads of other things going on. You want your learner to have as little barriers or obstacles to completion as possible. So if you allow them to consume like a bite-sized piece of your knowledge or your information that you're sharing and then circle back when they got a, you know another bite-sized time, that doesn't mean that they can't re-watch it uh, on, you know, again and again if they want to, but break things down into really small steps. That will increase the likelihood that they will finish your course. Um, other ways is to really, again, back to giving your course from a place or creating your course from a place of, of service rather than doing it for the, the money. If you bring it from a place of service and you're really, really bringing value, they are more likely to, to complete it because they're getting something that they feel is really valuable. Brilliant. Thank you so much. 
Uh, next question is, when designing a course, what is the ideal length of time per module? And can you give any tips in terms of how you put a value on an online pre-recorded program as opposed to delivering it live? Yeah, sure. So that, and that's something that I get asked regularly. It's, there, there really is no secret sauce into how long something should be. Um, and it depends on what your course topic is and what, you know, what your niche is or your industry is. But in saying that, the value is the value that you yourself bring. So, you know, if you are bringing somebody on, like we said at the start, you're bringing them on this transformative journey. What is the value in that journey? How are you impacting their life? Are you like, are you teaching them a new skill? And think also of you yourself so you are the expert in this field how long have you taken to create this like not the course but to create the knowledge and the expertise that you have gotten and that is valuable so don't underestimate like oh it's just an online course and i'm saying that in air quotes for anyone who's like not watching the screen like you don't water down or dilute what you're doing because you have this concept of like it's just a course it's just this is that you are bringing you you are bringing the knowledge that you've had you're bringing and sharing the experience or your blueprint or your you know if you're doing a spotlight course or a, a feature course you're bringing the information that they need to get them from a to b and and that is a value so there is no like you know um magic number there's no magic length for your course truthfully i would say bring them on the journey give them that transformation and do it as quickly as possible so that's what's going to bring the value to them they're not going to sit there and be interested in listening to extra bits of added information that's not relevant that's not going to get them to the to the solution as fast as possible Brilliant, thank you. And um, there's somebody who missed the name of the web link when uh, around the time when you were talking about Google Trends, something called Call Me. I'm not sure what they refer to there, but maybe it rings the bell. Uh, so uh, Google Trends, Udemy. Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe they misheard. Yeah, Udemy. Um, that's U D E M Y. M -Y. Yeah, U D E M Y dot com. Sorry, I just typed that in the chat. Um, so really interesting. Thank you. Which software do you use to show slides and your camera? We had a lot of question around that actually. Probably four or five people asked the same question. Oh, for my own slides? I yeah, actually, you, you know what? I get asked that a lot. And I am putting together a mini course on how you can do that yourself. And it costs you nothing to do. Well, the course will cost you, but for you to do it will cost you nothing. You don't need to buy anything to do it. Brilliant. And, and maybe you can put in the chat later how, how people can um, avail of that. Sure. Um, so um, let's see. Can you give us a list again of the third party platforms? Sure. So third party platforms, there um, there's so many out there. The main contenders are Teachable, Thinkific, um, uh, Kajabi. They are the, the, the main three. Um, Kajabi is at the higher end um, of price point. Um, Teachable and Thinkific would be the main two. Then, um, and, and I'm saying this as a, it sounds like it's it's a lesser product. I'm not saying then as it is a lesser product, it's just the, 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 the next one down in terms of popularity, but is by all means very seriously a contender would be something like Podia. Podia is great in that if you are thinking of building a membership site, this is something that Thinkific, it's more expensive cousin, doesn't actually allow you to do quite at all or quite as well. So Podia, I would say is a, I think that's $39 a month or $79 a month, depending on your plan. So it's much cheaper than the other three, um, but is a really powerful tool. If you um, are just looking to, you know, dip your toe in the water, um, Guru Can is another solution. And that I think is at the moment, that's on a lifetime deal of, um, I think, $50 or $70 or something. Um, if you Google search Guru Can, you'll find that. Um, so yeah, they're the, the, the main ones. You, if, you, if you look around, there are others, but Teachable Thinkific um, 
Kajabi and Podia are the, the main ones. Um, there's then the other ones like the marketplace, like Udemy would be one of the most well-known marketplaces for, for getting your online course out there too. Brilliant, thank you, Meg. And there was also several people who have expressed interest in the template. Um, so uh, perhaps you can also put your email address in the chat for people um, to be able to uh, contact you regarding that. Um, so let's see another question about what you used for the presentation, like really lots of people interested in that. <laughs> um, so um, yes, the, also a question about is the recording going to be available of today? Yes, but for a limited time only. So we will share that um, uh, information because there was a few people who said they, they, they had uh, issue with internet connection and could not hear uh, necessarily everything. So I understand that completely. And we will um, have the recording available, but uh, only for a period of two weeks. And just to say, Helena there, so I, I see loads of people saying about this uh, software or what program have I used for my my demonstration so like this is all done through zoom um and i i promise i promise i will put together i just find in time putting together a very short uh feature course this is an example of a feature course teaching you how to do some one thing very specifically and uh and it's really it will be very straightforward i will even put a template in so it's literally just drop a template in and you are up and running so i will do that Brilliant, thank you. Um, next question, what is the best way to keep the email list? So um, keeping your email list, if you get, uh, if you purchase this uh, email software, so we said something like um, Active Campaign, Convert Kit, um, they're the mailer light is, is a not one I would generally recommend, but if you're looking for something absolutely very, very minimal cost, if cost is an issue, that would be one to look at maybe initially. But active campaign is something I would always recommend and I would stand over their um, service and the, the things that you can do with what the automations you can set up with that particular tool. Um, that is where you will keep your email list. And the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant thing about active campaign is you can segment your list. So according to how people have come to you. So if you are following my uh, advice and you're starting your you're growing your email list right from day one, right from when you've decided you're creating your course and committing to your course, you can um, set up things that when people join your email list, you can tag them. So you'll see, well, they opted in right at the early stage or they've come to me through, you know, a certain form or a certain inquiry or and you can keep it really clean and easy for you to manage then for the whole life of your course. And if you have multiple courses, you can segment them all within your uh, mail responder too. Great. So um, um, another question, I'm sorry, there's lots of questions. Uh, what about micro credentials like digital badges? What do you think of this trend? Sorry, what about my micro credentials? like digital badges oh sorry Di i thought you said digital budgets i was thinking i don't know the answer to this one digital <laughs> badges yeah so um i see this quite often in terms of if you are looking to have your course uh, like a accredited courses people are going down the route of digital badges um there seems to be a kind of a school of thought that um the accredited courses for like um like schools, if you want to create like an academy or a school, there is um, credibility around building that kind of authority and things like that for your, for yourself or for your own brand. But generally for the day to day business or entrepreneur, that's not something that um, people really implement or there also generally seems to be a fatigue around it that it's a bit like um when you see people winning awards right and they can get like you, it gets to be the situation where people go oh, there's like award fatigue where you could get an award for anything badges kind of went the same way for a while so they, they seem to work best if you are like an academy or a, a bigger body rather than uh uh an entrepreneur sharing your knowledge individually Brilliant. Um, another question this time from um, the, the chat. What do you do if you have two ideal groups of clients? You 
oh so uh two ideal groups of clients but one one course offering uh, is it I, I assume that's what you mean um if it's two if you have two ideal groups of clients and two different variations of your course you could segment your course and do two different streams of it um or you could segment in terms of when you have if you have two different courses two different clients but one course then i would say really focus at your marketing level of one stream of marketing for one client and one stream so you're not diluting it down you can't it's a bit like spaghetti and throwing a bowl of spaghetti at a wall and hoping it will stick with somebody if you are very focused on who you are speaking to chances are it will convert to far better sales for you okay and um also you mentioned not to use a personal email address when you're doing your lead magnets, uh, but you uh, could you say a little bit more why or what else to use? Oh sure. So you, so when you are creating your course, use your course creation email. I've I've seen several times that people sign up for the like active campaign or whatever, and they sign up with their personal email, like so, like I don't know, like megogara at gmail.com, and then there's like everything gets modelled use be really consistent and intentional this is your course this is your business set set up all of these things with the business um or course specific email address and i would even take that a step further that don't use the one that you're using in your business as your day-to-day -day business address like have you know support at or whatever the 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 prefix is and keep that one one dedicated for your email system Thank you. And also, you 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 um, mentioned um, some some uh, technical uh, practicalities around uh, uh, lighting and sound and so on. Um, so one question we have on that topic is: What about doing the video outside? You know, do you need special lights still if you're doing it in daylight? If you're doing your video outside. I would encourage you to invest in a very, very good microphone, like a lav, a, like a lavalier microphone. They're called. It sits on your lapel, um, because often we won't even be aware of it until you play back your video. But you'll hear like birds tweeting, and you'll hear like the br slight breeze, and your video footage will, I guarantee, pick up those things. And that mightn't seem like a big deal or a deal breaker to you as a course creator. But it can actually become really annoying to your um, to your student, right? When you're in your when they're going through your course lessons, so you want to have the sound as good quality as possible. If you're going to do it outside, have a decent microphone so it's not picking up ambient sound from the environment, and you are the spotlight of your own course. And another question, related question here is: Can you recommend some basic must-haves for mics, webcams, and lighting? Sure. So basic must haves. If you're on a budget, there's a microphone called a Boya, B-O-Y-A microphone. It works with um, with your computer. It works with your uh, phone. If you're recording on your phone, it works with your um, with your camera. It can just plug into your camera directly. If you are prepared to invest a little bit more, the next one up would be a Rode, um, a Rode Go. They're like in fact i have one here i don't know if you'll be able to see it like this little microphone here Ooh, this way um and that is a really brilliant microphone it's small it, and the sound is brilliant on it and it works inside outside it comes with a what they call a dead cat like it's a big fluffy muff that you can put on the microphone so if you're outside um you won't get the wind noise and if you were looking for a wireless solution i recommend the road go um so you it, it's wireless it plugs into your camera there's a new version that they released two weeks ago that will work with mobile phones as well and you can um click the transmitter to your recording device and a little magnetic uh, microphone to yourself and it's brilliant it's just one i would recommend then for lighting um i'm trying to see can i grab anything here from around me L like small led lights are really really good and you can pick them up quite reasonably on amazon what I would say is have a look um, at how how your light works. You want to have um, you don't want to have a light like right over your head because you'll look terrible. Overhead lighting is not your friend. So you want to have what's called key lights. That's a light that's coming from the front, and you want to have what's called a hair light. So that's a light behind you that's just going to pick up kind of the edge of your head so that you don't blend into like your background or you don't just kind of 
it, it just it will define your features and make you pop more. Um, so that's for your lighting. We've done microphone lighting and um, was there anything else on that one? Uh, we had microphone lighting and webcam. Webcam. So uh, webcams, Logitech is a brilliant brand. There's the Logitech Streamcam, which I personally use and I love. Um, and then there's one called the Logitech Biro, which loads and loads and loads of course creators also use and love. Um, I recommend Logitech because I personally use it and I have had a fantastic experience with it. If you do get the Logitech Streamcam or the Biro, just know that you don't actually need to install the Logitech software that comes with it to use it. So if you're someone that doesn't like love tech, don't get bogged down with installing their own brand software. You can literally plug this in and it works with your Zoom or your Loom or your Screencast-O-Matic or your Camtasia or whatever your chosen software is. It will work with that without this standalone Logitech pro program. Thank you so much, Meg. Uh, that 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 have been all the questions now, as far as I can tell, um, because some some of the questions have already been um, answered. Also, a lot of very nice uh, compliments in the chat section. Fantastic, Meg. Great. Thank you. Great session. Uh, uh, great information. Um, as a teacher and mentor, you have given me tricks to use with my business students. Thank you so much. A great oh, workshop. Great. Great. Uh, Thank you so much. And if anyone wants to connect with me, you'll find me over on LinkedIn as Meg O'Gara. You'll find me on um, Twitter as Meg Creative. Uh, Facebook, I am Magnificent Creative because I love a good pun. And uh, my website is Magnificent Creative as well. Thank you, Megan. I would invite you to put those details also in the in the in the chat um, uh, um, for people to be able to avail of. Um, and uh, I just want to say um, a short um, thank you on 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 behalf of the Westwick team as well for you know um, for Meg uh, presenting the workshop today. Um, which, which was done uh, uh, very professionally with a lot jam packed with information and couldn't ask for anything more. And I can see that the participants had a lot of value judging by the comments and by the questions. So uh, brilliant, thank you very much, Meg. And just to remind everybody that today is the last day of our um, Irish thematic week and to make the most of the uh, day, uh, we still have matchmaking and uh, uh, meeting opportunities for everybody who has signed up to the to the platform. And you can still set up meetings and and connect with people. I and I encourage you to make most of this unique opportunity. Lena, if you just don't mind me jumping in um, on that on yeah. on matchmaking meetings, um, for many of you who was on the opening session with Noreen Darcy. You may recall she um, mentioned that she has a prize up for grabs for whoever networks the most. Now, as Helena says, make the most of today and we will be announcing the winner later. And for those of you who I think maybe might not have been on the call, I'll just share my screen two seconds. Um, hopefully it's loading there. Um, maybe a bit of tech, yeah. So as you can see, that is the prize that Noreen, thank, uh, big thanks to Noreen who has so kindly donated um, um, these prizes. So as you can see, there's face masks, um, lovely pair of gold earrings, um, t-shirts, everything up for grabs. And Noreen uh, of Darcy Marketing and PR has kindly sponsored this prize. So that's an extra initiative um, for you all to, uh, or incentive I should say, for you all to continue networking over the, the rest of today. So thank you. Thanks, Alison. And I, I would like to invite my namesake, the other Helena from Finland, to say a few words to conclude today. Hi, all. Um, I'm Helena Pohakatarmanen from Finland, the coordinator of the Stepula Power project. And what a week it has been. Thank you very much, Meg, for, uh, for as a first and all the splendid speakers, organizers, and especially participants of this thematic online week. Uh, uh, the latest number I checked in the portal, we were totally 111, and that's an excellent 
member and I'm excited to hear later on who is or who are the most active networkers this week and got, gets the prize. There will be similar events uh, to come in September. So please stay tuned, uh, follow our Facebook site and especially the LinkedIn group, which was mentioned on Tuesday also. So we hope to uh, continue this networking between splendid women entrepreneurs across the no uh, north uh, in our facilitated LinkedIn group, Trustful. So please send to your invitations there. So on my behalf, thanks for everybody and see you hopefully on September online. Thank you so much, Helena. Thank you, Meg. Thanks to all the participants and the Westpeak team. Stay connected, stay tuned, and uh, see, you, see you on the other side, as they say. Um, have a great day of networking and um, continue discussions. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having me. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. Thanks.